Welcome to VCarve Pro training on how to make a clock face using the circular array tool. Here we have the the circular copy that we're going to be using. Yeah, that will be the tool we'll be using. But first of all, let's take a look at what that clock face might look like. Here's a uh, 3D preview from a VCarve Pro project. And then here's a actual photograph of the project one of my students got first place at state. Uh, not only does it have 3D clock in the front, it's got 3D carving on the sides and this lid lifts off so there's a hidden storage underneath. If we take a look at the VCar Pro preview of the front of that, we take a look at right there and there in our, our dial, clock dial right here, is on the outside. Here's another example on the inside and this is the one we're going to be doing today. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and start off uh, opening up a VCarve Pro project. And right here we have single-sided. Now we could go with double-sided on this. And if we take the clock mechanism uh, and put it on the back and pocket that out, then flip it over and do the clock face. But for this training, we're just going to be covering with single-sided. We want this to be square. We have 12.5. 12.5, 0.75 thickness, zero to the uh, top of the material, and we're going to use XY data position in the middle, and modeling resolution on standard. So I'm going to click OK. And here we're going to go, and we're going to first of all insert a circle. We want it at 0, 0, so it's in the center, and we want 11.5 inches diameter. Created our circle. We'll close this. Next thing we're going to do is we want to go to our clip art. The clip art, we're going to open our clip art standard that comes with uh, VCar Pro. Aspire has even more, but includes this as well. And we'll click on animals, and we're going to go down to our eagle head. We could either double click or we can drag this in there. So we've got this put into place. So I'm going to go back to my drawing tab, and then I'm going to go up to set uh, selected object size. So I'm going to click on this and I want that object size to be exactly 7 inches so that means we want link X and Y. I'm going to click apply. So that's perfect right there. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and start creating some layers. I like to use layers because it's easier to manipulate uh, uh, your different vectors for carving. And so we're going to do right click and we're going to go to move to layer. We're going to go to new layer and we're going to call this Eagle 3D. And we'll click OK. And then we're going to click on this one. This is already on layer one. And so all we're going to need to do here is we're going to go to layer one right there and we're going to click rename and we're going to name that circle. Now one thing you have to be careful of is is if you turn off different layers but you have that layer selected it might not be visible but anything you do here now is going to go to that layer so we're going to stay on our circle layer for now. Uh, Okay, and then we're going to create some more circles. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a new layer for those outside of those circles, and we're going to put those inner circles. And do that. And while we're at it, we'll add some more layers as well. We're going to do our minute marks. And then we're going to add one more, and we're going to have that to be the numbers. That way we have everything right there ready to go. So first thing we want to do is we want to do the inner circles, and we're going to add some circles in there. And uh, the first one we want to add is going to be for the where we're going to space our numbers there. And we're going to want a diameter of this one to be 9.5. And I'm going to create that. 
Okay, and then I'm going to create another one, and this one is going to be at 8 inches. Okay, and now uh, we're ready to start working with those. So I'm going to close this. First thing is we want to do is we want to create circles that we're going to be placing our numbers in, inside. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on the circle again. And while I'm doing this, I want to have both the toggle, uh, the grid and the toggle smart snap on. And you'll see why in just a minute. And we want to have a diameter at 1.25. Now look what happens when I bring it on over here. Notice what happens when I get to this location. It's going to get me exactly where I want it to be, right there. And we want it to be right at the, the zero. I'm going to click this. There is our first circle, exactly where we want it. Now, with that circle selected, I'm going to go to my, co uh, my circular copy, an array, and we want uh, the rotation center to be zero zero. We want 12 items and we want it to cover the 360 degrees. So we want it to uh, cover the whole 12 hour period and we are going to group those copies and there we go. So I'm going to close that and then I'm going to click here uh, those are going to be important when we turn this off and on. And right now, I'm going to create one more and layer, and we're going to send those to that layer. Okay, and we're going to put those number circles. And right here, I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to move to layer number circles. Okay, so we're good, to, good shape right there. So this one is, is this line actually. Once we've got these on there, uh, we can actually delete that if we uh, if if we wanted to. Uh, and then the other one we're going to do is we're going to actually put some marks within here for the minutes and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a box and that box is uh, going to be the, the larger one and it's going to be placed where we were right along here we're going to do a width of 0.4 inches and a height of 0.1 and we're going to place it right there. I'm going to close this and I want to move it on out just about right there. That's that's perfect, okay? And we're going to do the same thing we just did with the circles. We're going to go over to our circular array. We want 12 of those spaced th over 360 degrees and we want to group those. Well, I made one mistake. What was that? First of all, I'm going to do Control Z, but everything got put on one location. Control Z again. Close this. Control Z. There we go. Select this again because you'll probably end up doing this yourself at some point. Circular copy. Again, we're going to go up here and now we want to put this at zero. And now we're going to copy. Okay, and everything has been placed around <clears throat> around the inside dial right there and that's placed the number circles but I'm going to put those uh, on the minute marks and right here I'm just going to have to right click get out of this get close this select my marks right click and we're going to move to just the minute marks 
So we're going to keep it the number circles right here because you'll see what I'm going to do this because I'm going to take those minute marks off of here. Okay. And now I'm going to create another rectangle. Go back over here. And this time it's the smaller ones I want to create. 0.24 and the height of those is going to be 0 0.07. Bring it in about the same place right here. Click that. Close. And notice, automatically centered because I have my smart snapping on. But I want to move it a little bit closer in here. Right there, that's perfect. F to fit everything back in. And I'm going to go over here to our circle array. And again, I'm not going to forget this time. We want the zero to be the center. And we're going to go ahead and have not 12 items, but 5 times 12, 60. So it'll divide between each one of the hours. It'll divide that into equal spaces right there. And we want the total angle to be 360. We want to group those copies. Uh, no, we don't. And you'll see why. Copy, there we go. Close this. And then I'm going to go in wherever the large mark was right here. And we're going to delete those. Zoom back out, F to fit, clicking this, delete, click here, delete, 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 click on every place we've got the hours, delete, delete, okay, that, that's looking pretty good. So I'm trying to clear up a few things here. So I'm going to take out the eagle. So I can, and then I'm going to take out the inner circles. Okay. And now notice right there, those are all grouped. And I'm going to show you a little trick, but you need to be very careful with this trick that you <laughs> don't mess up. So watch clo watch closely. So I'm holding my shift key down. I've collected both of those. Now the window shortcut keys for copy is control C. For cutting something out is control X. Pasting is control V. So I'm going to do control X. Copy that out. I'm going to select everything here. G to group. And then control V and everything is back in place. Now I'm going to click on those, and I'm going to move to layer minute marks, and there it goes. Okay, so right here we've got the number circle still there, but we still have the numbers that haven't even shown up yet. So we got the number circles, we got the outer one, we can take that out. Right now we're interested in putting the numbers here. Uh, that we that we want and that's uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to select that layer so I'm at the numbers layer and I'm going to go into my draw text and I want the height on these to be 0.82 and I'm going to leave times Roman and I want those bold so I'm going to go 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and you see how they're appearing right here. I'm going to close this, and since I'm going to select all those at one time, even though these are in the way, it really doesn't matter right now. But I'm going to take those out of the way. Take those 
right there. Close this. I'm still at numbers. I'm going to select all my numbers. I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert to curves. That way I can individually use those numbers. So everywhere we have two vectors for each of the numbers, we want to group those. So I'm going to select that, G to group, select my 6, G to group, my 8, G to group, my 9, G to group, 10, 11, and 12. Okay, we're in good shape here. So now I'm going to put the number circles here and they're all grouped. Well for this exercise we definitely want to make sure that uh, they are not grouped. So to ungroup them we are going to press U and you see now they're ungrouped and we're going to bring back our numbers right here and then we're going to stick that layer right there that's how we want to do it now we're going to start placing those uh, within the circles so we're going to start with the top I'm going to click on my 12 right there hold my shift key down click the circle we're going to go over here to align objects and if you if those are not out on the uh, on your uh, menu you'll need to go up here go down here where it says show common tools on drawing tab okay so we're now this is going to center the objects in my last selected object okay so I'm going to click that there we go now don't matter it doesn't matter if the circle is outside uh, a little bit of the 12 those circles are all going to disappear uh, before we carve Okay, so we're going to go here now to our one, shift key, center, two, and we're going to work our way around the clock. Okay, as we're doing three, click our four, circle, moving as quickly as we can, five, okay. I'm starting to think of that song, Rock Around the Clock Tonight. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to uh, try to do that uh, uh, on this exercise. But uh, anyway, we ought to get this centered. And this is how we do it. The reason why we're doing that, though, is if we did not have these circles to align those, uh, it would be difficult. We'd have to manually try to align them in the position we want. If we tried to place these numbers around here, uh, the, the numbers are going to be rotated in a way that we do not want them rotated. So this gets them perfectly aligned. And we're going to go to one last one. Didn't take too long. And right there. Okay. Now that's looking looking pretty good. Okay, so let's take a look at some, uh, let's go ahead and put some things back in place here first, but now we can take those number circles out of there. We are not going to need those, okay? And while we're at it, rather than kind of click on each one of these individually, run the numbers, I'm going to draw a box around that, G to group. Press G to group, boom. We are ready to go on those. Okay. So let's make sure everything else is grouped for us. Uh, our minute marks, there we go. And since they're all going to be carved at one time, you can group grouped objects. Okay, so we have here and here. Now, I think we can get by without uh, uh, having those done individually. If you wanted to have them separately, both of them are grouped. But for this exercise, we're going to group them. But I want to make sure I'm in my minute marks before I do that and select them all G to group okay so those are grouped okay let's look at some other things we got inner circles okay so everything's looking good but we do have one thing we have forgotten to put in yet where are where is the shaft that's going to move the uh, 
second and uh, minute hands it's going to be right in the center here so and the circle will click circle and we're going to create another circle and that circle is going to be at zero zero and the diameter of the shaft is five sixteenths of an inch so we're just going to go slightly above five sixteenths and that would be 0.32 so 0.32 just above 5 sixteenths of an inch we're going to create and so we are ready on that one so that's looking good right there so let's bring things back together so we got the circle we put the eagle in there we want inner circles no we don't need those we want the uh, number circles no we don't need those we need the numbers and we need our marks okay now that is starting to look like our clock face that we are trying to do so this is what we're ready to go now we're ready to go over from our drawing tab over to our toolpath tab and from here first thing let's do is let's go ahead and start creating some toolpaths first thing we're going to do is we're going to do our 3d finishing toolpath now one thing when 3D finishing is sometimes you can get by without using a roughing tool path. And here when you're doing a 3D dished model like this and when that if it's coming in vertical or horizontal the first few passes are really up in the air before it starts coming in like a land, a plane landing. And after that first full pass all other subsequent passes are at 10 percent so let's take a look we want the model boundary for the limit of machining and let's go here and uh, look at what we have here we're going to put zero we're going to go with horizontal first and we're going to look at our tool path we got 3.8 inches per second that is fine and usually when you're doing a 3d finishing tool path you want to match the feed and the plunge rates uh, so you don't get what's called a sewing machine effect you don't want it trying to be, hurry up but having to slow down to go down and the step over you want 10 percent eighth inch tapered ball nose that's fine we're going to click OK and uh, we don't want any boundary offset and we're going to put here on the 3D finish we're going to put 3D finish eagle horizontal and we're going to calculate and preview selected tool path that looks pretty good you can see I was doing the horizontal up from the bottom and I put uh, a global fill color on the, the dark brown so we can see the contrast there now if you're machining and for example some of your wood is uh, maybe as you're doing this in maple instead of ochre possibly oak as well and you got some uh, uh, a rough a lot of rough pieces and rather than trying to sand that you're gonna let the machine do the work for you so we're gonna right click here and we're gonna duplicate and we're gonna double click on that tool path and here we have raster rather than offset and the raster is gonna go as you say straight across right here but this time we want the angle to be 90 degrees which will give us vertical so we're going to click in here and give it rename it and put vert for vertical Click calculate. Yeah, if we preview this select tool path, you can see the tool moving across now vertically. When you run the tool pass, you're only going to run this one first just to see how it looks. Uh, you're not going to, if it looks fairly smooth, then you do not need to run this other tool path. Okay, so we're going to close this, go back to our 2D view. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go right in here and we're going to click that where the shaft goes and we're going to go up to the pocketing tool path. And we have 0.75 thickness. Uh, we're going to go a little bit deeper through that to make sure it's a nice clean cut out of the bottom. We're using a quarter, can, a quarter inch up cut for this. Uh, and right here, about three uh, feed rate about three inches per second for this so we can probably close slow that down about 2.75 plunge rate we'll put at one and 
we put 18,000 RPM and pass depth uh, we're gonna close that path up down to point not point two five we're gonna do a point two eight because we want this to go through in three passes if it's a point two five it's gonna take a full four uh, four passes to do this so we're gonna click this click OK calculate yes we want it to go through the material now we're gonna preview selected toolpath exactly what we wanted back to our T 2d view again Okay, next thing we're going to do is uh, v-carve our minute marks right here. So they have been selected right here. The close. And since those are fairly small, I'm going to go with a 60 degree bit right here. Edit. We're going to do 18,000 RPM. Uh, plunge rate, we'll put at 1. And feed rate, 2.75 inches per second. And we'll leave this here at the same except final pass over put it three percent this is the final pass over just to clean things up ten percent is a little bit too much and uh, the 60 degree bit right here and notice right there we have a problem because that is diameter is one rather than half inch now two things here when you're starting with the tip and going up, if you're not going too deep, you could have a one inch diameter, you could have a half inch diameter, it's going to make no difference as far as the carving is concerned. But if you're going deeper, it definitely will have an effect. So I'm going to cancel out of this. No, I don't want to save that right now. I'm going to cancel. Yes, I'm going to cancel. I'm going to go back into select. If I hit edit, that only affects this project. But if I hit select, all other times this bit is selected it will be correct now 0.5 pass depth 0.25 is fine I want 3% on my step over here 18,000 for a smooth cut on this and for now we'll go 2.75 inches per second one on my plunge I'm gonna apply and click OK so every time I use that from now on that's gonna be correct and on the v-carve we're going to put v-carve and we're going to put minute marks and calculate and now we're going to preview selected toolpath that is looking good right there okay so i'm going to close this and go back into my 2d view and the next thing i want to do are our numbers and i'm going to go over here to v-carve now I've already set this up, so it's already done. Uh, uh, it's already selected how I want it, and I'm just going to rename it VCarve Numbers. Calculate and preview selected toolpath, and that's all looking pretty good. Now, if I wanted those marks just to be a little bit deeper, and this lettering to be a little bit deeper, what I could do is I could come up here my minute marks and I could uh, put a start depth of 0 0.01 just to nudge it down a little bit calculate and preview selected and you see just a little bit more do this on my numbers 0 0.01 calculate and preview that and just a little bit more that looks a little bit better F to fit everything in, in into the uh, to our screen there next thing we want to do is we want to create a little bit of a chamfer for that outer ring cut out to give it a little bit nicer uh, detail so we're going to go to our profile tool path this time and we want to cut depth no nope, we don't want it to be all the way 0.76 we want that cut depth to be at uh, we'll start out with point uh, three five on that see how that's going to be a little bit less than one half that might be a little bit too much but let's go ahead and select here want that 60 degree half inch same parameters there click OK and we want that to be on the outside no we want to be on the inside no we want to be on the line because we're going to create a chamfer on that and that will be created when we do the cutout on this 
and we want a conventional cut on this and we're going to go ahead and uh, add a little bit of a ramp to that and for this we're not going very deep we'll just do one inch for the ramp and we're going to put right here is profile chamfer outer ring. Okay, we're going to calculate and we're going to preview selected toolpath and see how that looks. Okay, that looks pretty good there. Now, we'll close this, go back to our 2D view, and we're now we're going to do our profile cutout right here. So I'm going to go back into my profile. This time I want to go 0.77 get all the way through. I'm going to select a uh, upcut bit because this oak, if I'm using oak, I want to get the material out there. I'm going to slow that down to 2.75. Okay, pass depth of 0.25. Uh, I'm going to go again, put it up to 0.27. That way I, it does it in three passes rather than four passes. 0.27 since we're going 0.77 depth. And apply plunge rate one. And right here we'll go with 18,000 on this as well. I've already done the calculations and that's the correct feed rate for that speed. Click OK. And I want it not on, this one I want the outside. And I'm going to go all here to the bottom. We're going to little, add a little ramp to here and we're going to go two inches on this ramp. Remember when, uh, and I'm going to do a smooth, Remember, the hardest thing on these uh, uh, router bits is a direct plunge cut. Uh, so the spiral router bits do much better if you uh, provide a ramp for them. I don't want any tabs at this time. And I want to put this profile uh, cut out no tabs. And I want to calculate that. Yes, that's going to go all the way through. I'm going to preuse select it to a path. I'm going to double click on the waste material and see how that's going to look on the side there. And that looks pretty good. That looks gives a really nice effect right there. Uh, so the reason why I like the profile cut out no tabs to do that is that I, by clicking on the waste space, it gives me a very good preview of how it's going to look. But I do want tabs on this because uh, I want it being held in place when it does that final cutout. So I'm going to click duplicate, go over here, double click, and this time we're going to keep the ramps and everything, but I'm going to add tabs and I'm going to keep in that one inch uh, length and uh, one and a half inch right here, uh, one inch uh, length, 0.125 on my thickness, and I want this I'm going to do 3D tabs. They're easier to, you get ramps up, ramps down, it's a faster cut, and it's easier on the uh, on the tool as well. So I'm going to edit tabs, and I think I'm going to be able to, for this size, I'm going to be able to click right here, here, and here. That should hold things in place, we hope. Uh, so we have screws probably on all those four corners, and see how that's going to hold in place there. So I'm going to close this. And we're going to, on the outside, and I want to, right here, I'm going to click cut out tabs and calculate. Click OK. I'm going to reset my preview here, and then I'm going to just preview this selected toolpath and see what happens. And we still have some material here and here, so those four tabs are going to work. If this was completely being cut out here, here, and here, it might be a good idea to add an additional tab. Now, go back to all our tabs, and we're going to preview all tool paths now. And when it gets to the pass where it has no tabs, it'll cut out those tabs. Again, that is strictly so you can show your customer or you can see yourself how that's going to look like without the, with those tabs cut out. Now, when you're saving this though, you're going to be saving, first of all, you're going to be saving your finish toolpath 
as one toolpath. Okay? Right there. You just want that. You don't want to group them. And then you're going to save this as a separate one because you're only going to use it if you need to. Now, where we have the, uh, where we have the pocket, we want to do that toward the end because we want to group those together. So the V-carve are going to be your next group of tool paths. And you're going to save those. You're going to save those together. And then your last group is going to be the inside pocket for uh, the shaft. And then you're going to do your profile cutout, uh, no tabs. Oh, nope, I want tabs <laughs> right there. Because otherwise, when that, if that would cut out with no tabs, this whole piece would come loose on you. It would be very dangerous and you'd wreck your, wreck your piece, probably break a bit. So again, you're only using this for the preview and you're only using this toolpath if you need to. So right here, you are good, good to go. And uh, you can try this out. You have the clock dial on the outside here, a lot of different possibilities. But go ahead and try creating your own uh, clock face using the circular array toolpath. Thank you.